now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. It's been a minute, but we are back uh, to talk with, about some crazy League of Legends news, uh, focusing on the LCS, our bread and butter. Um, yeah, I am glad to be back. We're starting next weekend, uh, LCS Summer. Um, but before we get into that, just a brief introduction. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing a lot better. Came back from Hawaii. Friends got engaged during the trip, and then I, oh. I fell sick, which is why we haven't been here for a while because I was sick for quite a few days. Mostly just my voice, though. Everything gotcha. else was fine. Wow, engage. That's that's a big deal. I guess people start doing that around our age, huh? Or even before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that uh, is certainly a thing that happens, unless you're a gamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm engaged to this game called League of Legends, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, update on me. I've been doing all right, too. Just busy. Um, you know, I was kind of off the League of Legends radar for a bit, and then Mark Z came out with a banger video, the dive came out with an episode, and now I'm fully back in it. I'm so excited. Uh, but before we move on to LCS, we're going to just talk about some brief msi recap uh we never actually did a, a summarizing video to talk about our thoughts it was one of the best msis i think we've ever had maybe the best um if you don't remember genji won chovi won his first title uh just give me show me your quick thoughts or reactions it was a great msi so let me I think know it was a sick msi i was really appreciative of all the chances everyone got the I, I was a little controversial. I was I thought it was a little controversial to not allow the regions like force the bracket to be so forced uh, mm. to not do cross region, but it worked out. All the matchups were great. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect, but I mean it worked out this time, and I'm pretty happy about that. Choi finally got his um, laurels, and Genji is no longer the meme of cannot get past semifinals ever. Yeah. Um, so I think everyone won. It was a sick tournament. There was a lot of variety, and the only thing that might make it better in the future is if we put Fearless in there. Yeah, that's crazy, too, because we're going to talk more about Fearless as we move forward, um, because it's a big topic in the community. Uh, but yeah, I'll give some quick thoughts on MSI as well. Um, it was a really great format, and I think one thing that just... Um, did you see the video that was kind of trending? It was by this guy named Silvexs or something. He created videos like, "Why is LCS like? Why isn't LCS dead or whatever?" It was kind of trending for There's a bit. There's no chance that LCS should be alive still or something like that. Something yeah, like know. that, right? You you watched that video? Um, uh, uh, I didn't watch the video, but I saw it. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I just so, saw it show up in the video. I was like, I don't like Doomer videos, so I very rarely no, watch them. It was not a Doomer video. It was a hype oh. video for LCS. It was very oh, pro I LCS. Read the, Oh, okay, well, I guess I'm yeah, watching yeah, yeah. this. And I was like, you should watch it. It's hype. It's a good one because it, uh, it reminds us why we still do this, right? And I think this tournament is also another reason why we still do this and we still watch this and we're still interested is because, you know, the, the League of Legends game, esports, it's just better when the Western teams are at least somewhat competitive, right? Um, and I think something that really was special about this MSI was, yeah, you know, TL, they beat Fnatic and they had a really competitive series against T1. And then G2, you know, going into their rematch against T1, there was genuine excitement that they could maybe do it. And even though they got 3 0 it was pretty brutal. Um, <laughs> I think the excitement going into it was, of course, just um, really valuable for the scene. Um, T1, obviously, they got 3 2 by BLG, which was really fun to watch. Um, BLG made it to finals, and then it was a 3 1 Gen G. Uh, but it was a really close competitive finals against uh, BLG and Gen G. And, you know, Chovy finally overcame his demons. He won his first title. This was his first finals internationally ever as well. Um, unfortunately, Bin, this is like his third or fourth finals he's been to internationally and, and not won. Um, I think a third, right? So. Um, mm -hmm. Unlucky for him, but he still played really well. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm going to do some shout outs to some of the, the key members on Gen G. Um, Lehens was crazy good. Uh, he picked like the Blitzcrank, right? And was just hooking people like nonstop. Uh, he did get MVP of the series. Um, anybody you want to shout out? Uh, do you remember from the finals that was mm. really hype? I still think uh, my shout out would be for Chovy because yes, Lehens was was good in the finals but it's you it's it, it depends on who you're against right mm. like and knight had been playing pretty well this tournament so mm. to me i'm like chovy being at that level and under pressure i think that actually stands out more 
Yeah, that's true. And I also think um, <clears throat> there was like always like double or triple bans against Chovy, right? It became this thing where it was eventually first rotation bans against uh, his Corky because he was just first picking it over and over again. So I think that's always really special when, yeah, like, you know, these players like Faker and Chovy um, and even like um, APA was getting it too. I mean, it's a bit funnier that way, but they're getting double, triple rot uh, first rotation bans and then getting more bans later on uh, and takeaways and stuff. So, yeah, Chovy definitely deserved. And Keen, uh, this guy is not Doran. Okay, I think we all have our problems with Keen, right? He's not, like, uh, the most consistent player uh, because, honestly, he's... Well, there's this meme, right, where he was, like, been in every single um, role or um, place in every single number in LCK where he was, like, 10th place all the way to 1st place, right? So Keen, uh, first year on Gen G, he wins the title for them. So hats off to that guy, right? Um, even though it was mostly on Cassante and Twisted Fate. Uh, which are completely age champions, but good for them. Congrats you gotta get to that one in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last thing I got to get in, sorry, buddy, is uh, I did win the predictions again. I predicted Genji to win. Uh, <laughs> just saying. You <laughs> so... did. You did. <laughs> um, you, you sure did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this one was, I think I said whoever the winner of Genji versus BLG the first time they played would win the entire thing, and that's kind of what happened. So pretty awesome. It's been a while since I won a prediction, actually. So um, glad to have that happen. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, wait, wait, we have to say it. Oh, okay. We, we'll NA has been in EU2 tournaments in a oh, row that's now, true. internationally. Yeah. It's been a year straight. We just smashed them. <clears throat> it's actually crazy how how much better NA is yeah. better than EU. NA is better than EU. Honestly, G2, like, they couldn't even take a game off of T1 in the uh, second series. We don't talk about the first series. I mean, they didn't beat TL either, so... Yeah, they didn't beat TL either, um, you know. <laughs> Wait, right? then, I don't think so. <laughs> in the second, you know, in the second rotation, also, TL did take a game off of T1, right? And we had that mm, crazy severe true. game. We definitely have the better ADC. Yeon is so much better than Han oh, Sama. It's not even funny. Oh, my God. And they both <laughs> play for TL, so we've yeah. seen it one for one with yep. the same support. It's, it's yep. Not even close. So worth that. And I think the most special thing is that TL was actually so hype in their T1 series, right? I think normally we just get completely booty blasted, but no, we were like super Or sick. we play an early game and then it's a wet farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that too, right? Um, yeah, we get a, like, we had some seriously competitive games against T1. Uh, and I'm going to be living on that high in Copium for way too long off of that Samira stuff. Like, that was so fun to watch from Eon. Uh, but yeah, okay, we got it in. NA greater than EU. Woo! Okay, now let's move <laughs> on to more reasons why NA is greater than EU. Mark Z is the best commissioner to have ever existed. Uh, he's uh, implementing um, best of threes back into the LCS. Uh, it has been since 2016. Uh, this is when TSM went 17 and one in like match score. Uh, back when Doublelift and Bjergsen were on the same team. That was a crazy long time ago. Uh, and, this, and then it's the same year that you know. Doublelift, Lucian, Victor stuff happened. Uh, but seriously, best of threes is awesome. What are your, some of your thoughts on best of threes? Are you excited for them? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Give me some thoughts. Oh, absolutely like it. I think that just historically, I'm really glad that Mark Z, I, you could tell every time Mark Z spoke that he was trying to do his best as far as a commissioner can go, to be honest and straightforward. The community is like, last time we tried best of three, we did it on two days at the time. Like it was just a really sketchy format right the, and the yeah. viewership though and he acknowledged that right i like best of threes and it's not like it's untested we watch it in lck and lpl every year yep. um i i think that is generally a net win for us i mean we are league league fans we're not necessarily like the most hardcore but we're pretty hardcore to have stuck with it for this long yeah and to me it's like i do think that Mark C is right. Rio should probably will drop on average. But yeah. the good games will be so good. And then the bad games, like the, the reality is there will never ever be a world that will make me want to watch a bad game. Unless like I'm a super fan, right? Like I'm not gonna watch Lion well, not this year, Lions, but like there are some badass football teams, and then when they go against you, no one watches it. That's just how yeah. it works. No format will fix that, right? So I think we'd rather have the higher highs that everyone loves and like upgrades the sport than the super low lows. And also means that we could have more games too. Yeah. I, I think that's the big deal is that we're going to get more games in general. Uh, Cause even LEC was doing best of threes, right. With their weird hybrid, like three split format. Uh, we we're the first, we we're the first, we we're the only region that wasn't doing best of threes. Uh, so finally we're jumping on the, the bandwagon. And also I think that like 
I love uh, Mark Z's like framing, right? So like, what is his, the intention of why we're doing this? It's not to get more viewership or money. It's to support the fans and the pros and what they want. Fans, hardcore fans, like long-term fans, want best of threes because it's what the best regions do, and it's more games, and it has a chance to make NA more competitive. Pros want it for the same reasons, right? They want to be competitive, right? Like, even though pros should definitely care about viewership, and they should definitely care about, um, you know, making more money for the scene, right? Well, what does that the best is that it would give them the best chance to go internationally with the most games under their belt to compete the best. And... There was this quote by Kobe, I think. It was either on the dive or some tweet he made where, like, we can do all these changes we want, but the only thing that's really going to save NA or make NA better is uh, if we do better internationally and get more wins. So it's been creeping up, right? Uh, Energy beat G2, uh, TL beat Fnatic. We have some close series against some top Asian teams. We just need a couple more of these, and we're going to ramp up, I think, because... Like, if we don't have these moments, it doesn't matter what changes we make to the format. It doesn't make matter what changes we make um, to our rosters and teams and who we get from across seas, right? It's all about, do we do better internationally? And I think that this format does lead to that. Uh, let's talk about the next part of the format that's changed, and that is the return of the gauntlet. We're basically adopting uh, LCK's playoff format uh, for the most part. Uh, so what are your thoughts on it? It's basically, everybody gets seated into the upper bracket. First seed and second seed get a buy. First seed gets to choose which side. And then if you lose in the upper bracket, you go down to the lower bracket where you have to play like, like, like I think maybe 20 to 25 games if, it, if all best of fives go to five ser five game series. So uh, what are your thoughts on the on this format? I think this format is generally a big improvement for... Mm, I have some issues with the whole giant bracket like LCK does. I actually think LPL has the best in the mm. upper and lower bracket. But... I do think it's a massive upgrade, though, and a big dub to have it so that the winner of the season, the regular season, picks the side they want to be on. Yeah. I, I just never understood why it was random. And there were so many BS matchups because of the randomness, right? So that's a big improvement. I, I'll hold my breath on this one, but it does mean that if someone is like, let's say, worst case, like sixth place, I think, is the playoff qualifier, hmm. and they just make a big run like NRG did, I think it'll be a, ma it's a massive win. I think gauntlets are just cool. Uh, yeah. They just have some issues, but nothing that's like game breaking. Yeah, I, I also I do love the gauntlet format because it's hype and really fun to watch. But also like there's a special thing that always happened in previous years with gauntlet winners is that they would just be the best international team for NA. Right. Yes, sir. C9 was notorious for doing it year after year after year. They get third. They have such a terrible regular season or playoffs. They will run the gauntlet and then they make semifinals or they actually make quarterfinals. Right. I think it was. Like 2017, they made semi or they made quarterfinals and barely lost 3 2 to WE. That was through the gauntlet. And I think 2018, they did the same thing. They went through the gauntlet and then made uh, semifinals in 2018. So it's like, yeah, more games seriously matters, especially in like best of five environment. So I'm hyped for the gauntlet. Also, it gives more meaning to the first place seed, which, you know, didn't really feel that different from second place uh, in most years of LCS. But now it'll be a big deal uh, for first place. And we get to see uh, if anybody makes a KT blunder. I don't know if you remember, like, it was like a year or two ago where KT was like, we're going to choose SKT because we have to face them eventually only to get blasted. <laughs> and then SKT actually makes it to the finals over the <laughs> I mean, it's possible, right? You pick Team yeah. Liquid or something if they had a bad regular season. You're like, dude, we beat Team Liquid in the round robin. We can yep. do it. And then Team Liquid just pops off again or something. And they're like, like Who knows? oopsies, impact in playoffs. My bad. Playoffs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> betting against Faker in playoffs. Yep, uh, yep. So oh, I'm excited. KT. The next level of drama, you know, giving players and teams choices to make mistakes is always fun to see what they do. Uh, so that is another opportunity. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I really love the changes. Uh, all it means for me in my head is we get more games and everything has way more stakes. Every best of three has so many stakes because it's single round robin. And then we have this long form playoffs and we only have eight teams. Um, everything's going to matter, right? I think when you have a 10 season, literally, if you go back a year, we had 10 teams and we had eight teams would qualify into playoffs. It really felt like so much of summer does not matter, right? You kind of rally at the end of the year, you scrape, you scoop into playoffs and then the best team wins and that's great and all, but um, everything's going to matter. You cannot mess around uh, in this format. 
Um, so yeah, let's, let's get to sum up, I guess, the LCS changes in terms of the format. Um, what else do we have to talk about? We have a lot of roster changes, right? Uh, is there anything else you want to bring up with the format before we talk about roster changes? Yeah, I would say really quickly, the NACL changes are also cool. I think that oh, them putting yeah. Fearless in NACL is cool. I think them collabing with more celebrities is necessary and interesting, and they're doing full Fearless. So what happens yeah. is the best of fives. So Fearless, they, they're making it so that if one team picks it, they neither team can pick the next game. So that yeah. means 10, 10 are auto banned. And then in game four, it will have only three bands. So only the first three bands come in. So won't, there will not be five bands. And in game five, there will be no bands. It's basically blind pick with 40 bands from the pre pre previous parts of the series. Yeah, I love that. I think yeah. in the future, maybe not this extreme, but something like this will be the future of League. And we will look back and be like, why did we play metas where only 60 characters were played out of 168 all tournament? And we just kept seeing them over and over. Why yeah. like, why was Fearless not always the purpose? So that's so how I think about it. I was a little anxious about it. But as I watch LPL, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I also think it's really valuable that... Um, okay, so LCS Challengers, NACL, is doing it. And that's they did it last but two. And it's experimental. It's interesting. But the big eyes is that LPL is doing it at the same time, and that's awesome. Even though LPL's fearless is like, it's like pseudo fearless, right? So uh, it's only if you pick it, uh, you can't pick it again in the next uh, game. So like, if you pick a champion, your opponent can pick that champion in the next game. So it's like a pseudo fearless uh, in LPL, but still really cool, really interesting. And it's funny how this was just a conversation that a couple streamers or a couple personalities had like two years ago about fearless, you know, doing some streamer tournaments that were fearless. And then now it's actually going to mainstream formats. Um, this is late stage esports, right? We are experimenting with formats. MSI and Worlds are getting changed almost every year. We're experimenting with regular seasons. LEC made a big change to do three splits. LCK finally changed their super ancient formula where if you want regular season, you get admitted straight to the finals to now we have, you know, like a normal double elim uh, playoff bracket, which was so weird that LCK did that for years. Um, LPL is doing fearless, right? So it's kind of cool that late stage esports League of Legends, we have so much innovation across the entire world. Um, yeah. And then let's talk a little bit about Challengers League. Uh, I've actually never read any of his books, but I think you know who I'm going to mention is Brandon Sanderson. Yep. Is that him? Was, okay, that's him. Steel, and I looked. At, I had to look him up. I was like, cool. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> cool. So we don't. Neither of us reads then. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> illiterate, illiterate guys <laughs> yeah. talking about an author who's probably very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's really good. Okay. I guess we don't have much to say about him then, because neither of us have read his books. I guess uh, the only thing I read are tool tips. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, about him. I read light novels, which are basically just anime in the book. So okay. Uh, you're yeah. It. You're a weeb. Got it. Okay. So you're a weeb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a mega it's gamer. Well <laughs> yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, well, great, great to have him. I think like he is not like he's in the to me. He feels like he's in the same boat as like Rick Fox or something or Shaq when they like join the LCS. But he's in like the different. He's in just in a different corner, right? He's like the goat of books, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> he's getting a a challenger team, and I like that. Riot is making things nice. I mean. Honestly, it's like 15, 14 years too late, but they're like making things nice so that, you know, a player or a person can invest money or an influencer can invest money. And then Riot has with their partnership program, they do all like the heavy lifting and like the difficult stuff, which is cool. I'm glad they're doing that, but it feels like it's a, it's like a little too, little too late, right? It's like, why didn't we do that before we annihilated the Challengers League, right? What if we mm -hmm. had this for the, you know, our 10 franchise teams where, we could set up the system for them so that we didn't have all 10 of them abandon the Challengers League. Because uh, now it feels like we're doing all this really nice, unique, clever stuff to save something that already died. You know? Sucks that we already lost our Challengers League. <laughs> yeah, Challenger but. could have always just been the experimental league that does the fun, interesting things, right? That yeah. are you, we never do for the main league. We can just be the pilot program. But it was always just... It was Baby just LCS, LCS 2. Yeah, yeah. It was LCS 2. Retirement and just, home LCS. Like, yeah, it was retirement home. We didn't have rules about veteran players or imports. It became such a cesspool for so long, and then it failed miserably. And now we're trying to save a dying thing. So that's like the sad part of it in that I don't know if it's going to do anything, right? I don't know if all this investment and stuff is going to change. Like people aren't going to watch Challengers League 
as still, right? I I think people will tune in a bit more because of Disguised Toast team last year and this year, or the last split in this split. And, um, you know, maybe people will check out Brandon Sanderson, but, like, I don't know, man. Like, I've always, like, just viewed and checked out Academy streams. It has at most, like, 1 or 2K viewers, like, maximum. Like, that's not a good day, I think. So... Will that change? Will it actually start to generate revenue? Will it actually develop more talent now once, you know, it's the main challenger leagues kind of been canceled? I hope so, but hard to say, hard to say, but I hope it does do some good stuff for us. Um, all right. Well, that's that's kind of the big updates. We kind of did our own preview of Mark Z's announcement video. Um, he's the go-to commissioner. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Let's talk about some roster changes. I think the big one I want to talk about is Jensen from FlyQuest over to Dignitas and then overall the Dignitas roster in itself. So, um, yeah, what's up? Give me some of your thoughts. <laughs> I, I don't get why Jensen just doesn't get to have the respect. At least he's on a team, but, yeah. uh... <laughs> I just don't get it. He doesn't... I don't even... Okay. If you heard rumors about him being a terrible teammate, right? That's one thing. But no, I mean, you see him on stage, he, he literally goes deathless against Jojo Pion, the de facto... Not the de facto, the agreed upon, including, in my opinion, best mid laner in the league. And they're like, nah, man, I just... Inspired and Whip are just, just such homies, him. man. We just can't play with him. He's just it's so bad. too hard. It's too bad. He's too vegan. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just I don't get it, right? Uh, so yeah. maybe there'll be an expose that comes out. But like usually, this this scene is so terrible about being subtle. It's well, especially when Double F was here. So bad about keeping secrets. Mm. So I feel like you would have heard it if there was a reason. So to me, I think it's a shame. I'm glad he's not on the bench, though. Uh, NA, the, my biggest pet peeve is NA putting good players on the bench because they just don't want to pay them or don't know how to put them, like, don't know how to scout, and then they pick up some rando from, like, China or Korea. Actually, it's always Korea, now that I think yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened. We just picked up some rando from Korea. Like, literally, that's what happened, right? <laughs> we, picked up, <laughs> we picked up, like... Hey, like, at we... least Jensen's taking some rando from Korea's role on... I think he's the uh, starter, so... Dignitas, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, um, for anyone who doesn't know, we got um, quad. FlyQuest got quad. They saw that 100 Thieves got quid, and we were like, we can do the same thing, buddy. We can get quad from Korea Challengers. I guess he was technically on FlyQuest Challengers last year, or last split. It says he oh, was on I, FlyQuest from December who to he June. Is. I've heard his name once. He was on Nongshim for a bit and gen g i guess as a sub for a bit so was we'll he the starter for notion uh i don't, I don't know so i, I feel like i, I watched idea. those those goobers before no he was a sub he was a sub on okay okay. okay i was like that yeah. doesn't make sense no he was uh oh fiesta he was like the sub for fiesta okay uh, he, fiesta he was, was, was a name i know <laughs> okay he, i think he was temporarily the starter over fiesta uh and then and then was did not was stay it? Mm -hmm. started uh, where have i heard the story before but anyways <laughs> okay cool yeah so that's quad we got quid and quad playing oh, I, I don't know if I, I think i like that i think that's pretty funny like for the memes i'm kind of glad flyquest did it <laughs> just because it's so weird <laughs> that we have two guys with names like that um that's yeah true i speaking of names i gotta say this um uh lahens he thought his name was legends but he doesn't speak English, so it's Lahens. He misspelled it. But we that's, have Google. That's the story behind Lahens' name, man. I don't know. I'm just I saying. I always thought it was like some kind of extra thing. Like his name has like a huh sound in it, so he's like no. Legends. And okay, so he he just, tried he to make his name Legends. He did a. He didn't know how to spell it, or he mistyped, and he just put Lahens. Okay, <laughs> he just so with it. <laughs> in I uh, believe it was LPL on a like third rate team. There was a guy named Meteor, but his mm. name was Mitoer, and oh. I always thought that was the dis most disgusting typo I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so there's a, that's, yeah, that's there's another player. Me. There's another player. I think he's I, he's a top tier player who has like some weird misspelling in his name. I don't know if you remember. He's also Korean. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, the shy, the shy. He's he wanted to name himself the sky, and he named himself the shy instead on accident, and he just rolled with it. Really? I thought he yeah. was just always a, a homage to shy, the the legendary top laner. Nope, nope. He was uh, Riven one trick and solo key wanted to be the sky. 
and you, you mistype. I get that you make the mistake when you make your account as like a you know a nobody on the ladder. But like, at some point, are we not going to like? No. Did, did no one in LCK no. would go like, "Hey, bro," <laughs> or LPL in the shy's case because he didn't ever play in LCK? Did no one tell him, like, "Hey, you literally spelled your name wrong"? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I think they just thought they're like. So okay, you're the shy. He's like, no, I'm the Scott. Oh, whoops. You know, just it's like maybe it's probably one of those running jokes that just became reality sort of thing too. Um, so we got Quid, we got Quad, we got the Sky, we got Legends, and then we got freaking Lehens, and yeah, it's uh, it's all funny. All right, let's let's move on. I'm so glad Faker named himself Faker. Like, yeah, imagine if it was a terrible name and he was just that good. Yeah, Shaker or something. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, or yeah. Okay, let's let's talk about Dignitas. Okay, so they pretty yeah, yeah, much yeah. revamped the their entire roster. Yep, they have Licorice, Spica, Jensen, uh, Zven, and To. Wait, who's their support? Tomio, is it? Um, I it was Tomo. Isles. Is... Yeah, Tomio is, is a, a ADC. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The three. Oh, it is. Uh, it's still Isles, right? It's just the it's same Isles. guy. Yeah, so um, four out of five players changed. Uh, Dignitas is going the OG route, the uh, the classic of just buying all the uh, veterans with no teams and putting them in one place. Uh, but this is a bit different because I feel like yeah, okay, I was like <laughs> teams, I was like, <laughs> teams recently, uh, Dignitas and Immortals and stuff. They actually have been getting at least recently like a lot of like random unknown talent to fill their rosters, and it's been interesting to see them develop. But they never go anywhere. Now we're getting like some players that probably should have been in the league this entire time, which is yep. why it feels a bit different than the usual of like when CLG got like Broxa and Finn and stuff like that. So and Broxa wasn't in the same category as Finn. Finn was bad. Broxa had come off; he was only one year away from his World Finals ap- appearance. So no, I think but that's way when, different. I think when CLG got Broxa, he was like mega washed. Like he was after his super. Oh, oh, you're talking about CLG. Bro- I thought you were talking about TL Broxa. I'm like, no, I don't think so. But yeah, well, yeah, I agree. Was also terrible. But okay, go <laughs> on. Um, I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk a, about that. It was a dark time. All TL really fans bad. don't want to talk about. That was a that. bad <laughs> legal year for League of Legends. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about. Um, let's talk about the Zignatos roster. Yeah, uh, I think as you already alluded to, Spica Licorice deserve it. Licorice had a great season on Golden Guardians. His team disappeared. Nothing you can do about that. Mm-mm, and him not being you. picked up is not because of skill, obviously. He had his resurgence, had insane games last year. I remember the Poppy games. I just remember him playing like a man possessed. Yep. Uh, Spica, a little bit more iffy on. I get it. He had a great peak. He is the NA hope. He was, but like he was stuck on TSM. So I literally cannot tell um, if this guy, like he, sorry, he. I guess he did play for FightQuest. Yeah, bit. but it was a tragic. It, it was, was a tragic a, time. No one like no. It was like Prince even looked terrible, right? And this is him coming off his MVP. So I like, can you really blame him there? So I am iffy about him, but he still gets a shot from me. Um, and then Zen is actually really exciting too. I think a lot of people might not know if you only started watching League during the COVID era. But Zen was an elite eighty carry. Now, okay, he's a tilter dog, but he was an elite eighty carry for a very long time. He's actually the OG G two. Like, well, I guess Emperor is, but. Zen was the OG for the dominant G2. Yep, yeah, um, OG Niels, yep, G2 Zven, like this guy is as old as it gets. He's one of the most OG players in the world right now, honestly. Um so that's pretty that's cool. That's true. <laughs> I, I was like, wait, really? yeah. that's true. I think he's been playing since 2015. 2015's yeah, G2, time. yeah. And he was in Academy in like 2014-2013 for LEC and stuff. So he's just been there for a long ass time. Oh, no, actually 2016. I think 2015 was Emperor. But anyway, it doesn't matter. No, he was on OG in 2015. He made semifinals. Yeah. Oh, yes. They went for OG, Niels, and Smithy 2. Okay. Yeah, G2. Um, so, yeah, I think that this roster is going to really benefit from Zven. Like, what is what is C9 basically missing all this year? It was like a cohesive, you know, team environment, like an overall game plan. How do you win the game in LCS? And, you know, Zven... As much as we can flame his support and flame some of his choking plays on ADC, this guy knows how to how to make it to Worlds. This guy knows how to win games in LCS. Like that's there's no doubt about that, right? We can talk about is he worth to be on a top spot on a top tier team, but when we talk about like is this guy going to perform in regular season LCS? Is this guy going to perform in challenge the top teams in LCS? Yeah, he's going to do that. He's going to instantly come in and be a top tier ADC. Um, 
will he be number one? Probably not, but he will be something that's you know frightening. And he hasn't played ADC in a year and a half, but I fully believe in that um, in that notion. Um, also, he, we, it kind of goes a little less spoken, but he was like the force of C9. C9 was known for being clutch, was known for being consistent. Second, he leaves the team, even though they have a super team on roster, they don't have the leadership. They don't have the guidance. It's, it's just very obvious to me that he was the major factor because Vulcan, in every sense of the support mechanic world, should be better. Yeah. But it was just such an obvious difference, right? Yeah. So Vul to me, yeah. this guy is probably going to be a great thing for their work ethic and their leadership. Definitely. I, I think that Vulcan lacks a lot of what Zven or other players on previous rosters that Vulcan played on, right? Like, Vulcan got to play on EG with, like, Inspired and Impact, and then Vulcan yeah. got to play on C9 with Zven uh, and, you know, Blabber and stuff. Literally like with Zven. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I, I do think that, you know, as Vulcan has left these rosters and joined other rosters like, like FlyQuest, we realize he doesn't have the leadership qualities that, you know, I think Zven definitely has. So that's going to be great for this roster. Uh, Spika, you've already mentioned, I think... We're still waiting for him to prove that he can be a top tier jungler consistently year over year because he just leaves rosters and comes back so often. Um, he has so many tragedies, right? Like Spika has he won NA and then had the zero six TSM tragedy causing both the NA goats to to retire, right? Like <laughs> it's like he has such a tragic history where he's done so. You know, he has the nine man sleep. Uh, he has doing super, super well on FlyQuest after some TSM bullcrap to getting ninth place on FlyQuest with one of the best rosters ever, right? So um, I think Spika is kind of a veteran, right? He's been playing since 2020, four years now. And it's it's like, it feels like he's, it feels like he's still a kid, right? Still, it feels like he's just like this, this youngster who's waiting to prove himself. But now he's four years in. He's one of the oldest players in the LCS, actually, um, that's currently playing. It's pretty wild. He, like, he's older than APA and Yon in terms of experience, right? So it's it's pretty wild to think of that. Um, so He's in the midpoint. I don't know if he's on the older. I mean, he's, he's in the midpoint. Like, he's in the he's midpoint. He's still yeah. older than a lot of the, like, the top players right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? Um, I also think, you know... Licorice, it's he's also had a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, he had a great time on Golden Guardians last year, but literally right before last year on Golden Guardians, Licorice was considered a mega feeder, actually. He was considered bad <laughs> news for your team. So um, this roster has a lot to prove, a lot of ups and downs. And then let's compound on the fact they are on Dignitas, right? What is something that we talked about so many times? You can change the players. This is a Kobe quote, okay? You can change the players. You can change the names, but... Like the, the the organization stays the same, right? So we've seen this with FlyQuest. If you put that exact same FlyQuest roster last year that went ninth place on C9 or Team Liquid, they do not get ninth place. That's what organization does, okay? That's what infrastructure and coaches and people talking to the players behind the scenes, it has such a big impact, right? Uh, you could not play, put the players on T1 on different rosters and have the same success, right? So much of what makes T1 great is that they are on T1, the organization. It's not just the players. It's the entire yeah, brand You put the same guys on KT and they'll pick Gen G. Yeah. <laughs> and and <laughs> it's, you know, there's just, there's just so much that is to be nervous about this Dignitas roster because, you know, the organization is not good. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and I think it's even more telling that we talked about the org. And we talked about all, like, saw the passes, right? And then we talked about the org as, like, you know, the thing that, you know, you don't think about, but it is the elephant in the room. I think the bigger elephant in the room is the support didn't even get a single mention this whole time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and he's yeah, the only I guy they kept on. I don't know what Dignitas is thinking. They picked a roster with a lot of value to it. And they picked a support who was, at best, aggressively mediocre. Yeah, he was pretty aggressively mediocre. Uh, to be fair, it does make a big difference for supports if how your your jungler or your mid laner or ADC or whatever are good at the game and stuff. And, you know, Dignitas just had a mid laner who didn't really speak English. Uh, they had a jungler who was a rookie. Oh, we'll have to talk about the XU stuff too. Because uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, nice. But um, yeah. Isles was on C9 Academy and he did have previous history with playing with Zven. So there is that benefit. Okay. That's and fair. then I also think that this is like, thinking of like social stuff and like thinking of like you know and you got a, you're an adult you get a job in the real world right like um people do a lot of things to like connect 
you know, Isles is a connective tissue between the Dignitas roster. He's been playing with them for a split, and then now he can kind of connect the coach and the coaching staff to the four new members, right? So um, Isles maybe is like, I don't know, a secret agent for the coach to be like, you're going to be on this roster. You know, you're going to support the coach when Jensen inevitably flames me or something, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, So we'll That's see how this works. fair. He's the continuity point. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about XU now, though. Um, this is where it's very clear Dignitas is an organization that is not C9. It's not Team Liquid. It's not, you know, one of the better uh, organizations. They they let go XU with a tweet. Once again, the famous League of Legends tradition. Um, you get fired on social media, and other people find out before you even find out. You get fired. So pretty brutal. Um, I think other things is XU was promised by LCS coaching staff verbally that he was going to be starting next uh, split for summer. So he got lied to to his face, and he got fired on the internet before he even knew. So pretty brutal stuff. Um, yeah. What do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, so I'll apologize to XU last year. I or last split. I flamed him. I think in the early parts of the season, I'm like, I don't think he's very good. And then he started playing significantly better. Yes, Dignitas still didn't place that much higher, but I don't think it's a Dignitas problem. It's a, or sorry, I don't think it's an XC problem. I think it's a Dignitas problem. So yeah. I think that it is really shitty that he didn't keep his thing. I don't, I think this puts a lot more pressure on Spica too, because like, I think XU was the guy you want to raise on it. Like, you don't get lucky that often when you're a bad org, right? It's literally yeah. a coin flip. You're not the one developing them that yeah. much. So to me, I'm like, you got a guy who didn't have a fair shot. His first org was Immortal? No, it was that was Kenby. Who was his first org? Was it also Dignitas? I, I don't remember. He yeah. played for a bit on a different roster. and then... He did. He's 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 uh he's been in and out. Uh he was always on Dignitas. And then he was on C9 in 2020. He was always on Dignitas and he they still did him dirty? That's disgusting. Yeah, he's been on Dignitas for two That's years. like your parents just yeah. betrayed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty rough. What yeah, he f- he was on Dignitas Academy and he played on Dignitas, went back to Academy, went to Challengers, and then played on the main roster and then got yeeted. Yeah. <laughs> yeeted for Spica. Yeah, pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I have no, I have no words. I think that if you keep this roster, put XU here over Spica. I get it. Spica is the name. He has some fans too. He's kind of more known as a quantity. He probably has a higher floor. It's still disgusting to me. Yeah, I mean XU's ceiling is really unknown, right? His entire career has been on Dignitas. Like, what could he have done, right? He's never played on a good roster in his entire life. The first chance that Dignitas gets an actual good roster, he's gone. So sucks for him. Um, I think he made a tweet where he says, hey, LCS is so rough right now. Uh, if he doesn't get a team to play on, a, you know, a salary to pay his bills, he has to retire and go get a normal pleb job like us. So it's like, That's it's rough true. for him. So well, he went um, to Berkeley, so he's probably okay. Uh, my friend, I say that because my friend who went to Berkeley knew him. They were in the league club together. Oh, he was the best nice. player at Berkeley. And I was like, well, I mean, kind of obviously. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Berkeley is, you know, right above me. Uh, not too far from, from me right now. Um, great school, but um, you know. Not that it makes he, it, it doesn't matter what school you go to. It doesn't depends, make it okay to give. Depends what the job market <laughs> is, right? What's, what's his, what was his major? We got to figure this stuff out. We'll give him some personal adult advice, okay? He majored in gaming. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. He probably, yeah. Um, so, that sucks for XU. Um, I, I think it's very clear on this podcast, and it has been for years, and the people who have come in and out of this podcast, League Dad, Alistair, other people, we all don't like Dignitas for very good reasons, right? We've never not... There's never been a time that Dignitas has been considered a good org, and they have been there since the beginning. They've been here for 15 years, and they've always been a there shitty org. The <laughs> oldest continuous org name be next to Cloud. No, they're older than Cloud9. Yeah, they but they are. didn't. They're not continuous though. They they took yeah. a break in between. They both. did take a break there in and out, um, but they are up there with one of the longest, right? You know, um, just always were, been a terrible org. Also, in all sports, been when I followed them. Yeah. Odie has a bad reputation. Hit the old founder. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, they just never been even if they have good players. They're never long term competitive. Just bad decision making, bad branding. Apparently, Dignitas, as I've mentioned a long time ago, is it's like a name of a suicide assisted, sorry, an assisted suicide clinic. Okay, whatever. yeah. yeah. That, so that, or Dignitas means like dignity, right, or whatever, uh... and that's the, the idea. 
behind it. It's the I same see. thing. <laughs> well, that's depressing because you, if you join Dignitas, your career is you're basically assisting this career suicide. So oh, uh, hopefully, no. hopefully that doesn't I, happen to our players. <laughs> actually, the first thing you look up when you look up Dignitas is still that. That is okay. still the first result SEO-wise. And then the fourth one is the, the team, or the fifth one. Well, we are not here to make light on suicide. It's a very serious nope, topic. not at all. But it's kind of funny that whenever a pro player goes to Dignitas, you know, it's pretty doomed. <laughs> so no, also I... I hope that it is different for this roster. I'm going to give my... This is my ceiling for this Dignitas roster. I think they can make top four after playoffs, like at the end of summer. Spring. Really? I think that that's oh, their ceiling. ceiling. Mm-hmm. That's their ceiling. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, no, no, okay, no, no, okay, no. okay. I okay. think, <laughs> I I think like, that <laughs> they're likely going to place fifth-ish. Okay, so we're going to do some power rankings now that I mentioned it. Were there any other roster changes? I don't think so, right? Do you remember any other? Not that I know of. What, did, what teams do we even have anymore? I, we have eight, right? So we have... Shop by Rebellion. Oh, wait. Shop by Rebellion. Didn't they have a change? I think they might have. But it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, it does. We're LCS. All right, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Shopify, we came in prepared. We came in prepared. I just, all I know is that um, they... <laughs> someone said Lamau Shopify in after this. Uh... Okay. 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 I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Don't mind. Oh, we got. Uh, they got Tomio over Buki. That was their change, right? Tomo. Tomio. Tomio. Tomo is an ADC. Tomio yeah, is a jungle. Oh, they got Tomio. Okay, Tomo was the one who got kicked off for Zven. So I thought yeah. they got him. Okay. No, 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 no. They still got Bvoy. Possibly, maybe the best ADC in the league on the worst team by far. Okay, Bvoy has got to be the most like <laughs> extreme example of this, right? I think. Uh, what, well, there was like a Shalka, right? Had they had Broken Blade, Shalka went tenth place with Broken Blade, and then he immediately went to G two and got first place. Uh, I think something similar happened with Keen or something, where he was like on a really bad roster and was tenth place. Literally tenth place on a Freaker or something or one of those teams, and then he went yeah. to uh, KT and immediately got first or something in the regular season. So like, there's a couple of these. B boy feels like. Like next year, he's gonna be that guy. He's gonna be like tenth place or eighth place Shopify, get picked up by like a really good org, and then boom, he's just gonna like win the thing, right? So I hope Bvoy continues to perform, but let's be real, his roster is not good. Um, you know, thank God. <laughs> yeah, Tomio, Insanity, Zazel. Like I had some hype for these guys last split. It was a total hail, hail mary. They are off the di- disguised toast hype, and then they went like ninth, like seventh or eighth place. So it was pretty rough. Um, so that's the other roster change. Mm-hmm. We talked about it. We went over it. Let's do power rankings, okay? This is how we always do it here. No regular season bullshit. This is end of summer split. Who's winning the title and who's going to Worlds and who's placing? Uh, this is where we cast our predictions before the summer split starts. So uh, For playoffs or for uh what's the other word for it i just said or for i I just said it was whoever is going to world who wins first right what is the standings at the end of the split at the end of the year split and the split is the regular season right the split is the entire summer okay i see i'm just i'm being dumped in okay it's Uh, okay you're trolling me it's fine (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, so i mean we oh we didn't mention thanatos by the way oh yeah thanatos oh yeah we'll talk about c9 whatever i don't care about them uh, no, i'm kidding well, we'll uh, the, we could do the power ranking and we'll, then we'll talk, talk we'll about we'll that talk about, about the, the other roster change that's that's the, it happened so long ago i forgot about it but let's okay let's just start from the <laughs> let's just start from the top okay okay uh let's keep it hype because honestly if we do bottom to top i'm gonna forget so we do top all right, who is winning Summer Split? Go. Team Liquid. Team dude. Liquid, wow. wow. I mean, the team dude. looks better than ever, and they're the wow. only internationally competitive team we've had a while against Koreans, including wow. the Super Team Korean Liquid team. fanboy makes another surprising prediction. It's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go Team Liquid as well. I, I want them to win because I want this roster to go to Worlds, be first seed, because now being first seed at Worlds actually matters, makes a difference. They have the best international showing that we've had in a long time against Korean and Asian teams and stuff. So I'm down for Team Liquid. Do I think they're actually going to do it? I don't know. I actually think most teams that go to MSI do not win summer. Um, it's only double if teams that do that. <laughs> I think every That's other team... True. I think I think almost every other team in history 
unless you're a double of team, if you go to MSI, you don't win summer. I think that's happened like so many times, uh, especially to C9, right? Um, yeah, but so, you know, Team Liquid never won without double if until now. So, so I mean, anything could happen, right? Things could change. So I, I want Team Liquid to be the best. I don't know if they're actually going to do it. This is a personal desire, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that. So that's why I was being so careful about winning the split, a regular split versus right, the right. playoffs, right? Because I was like, yeah. I don't think they're going to win the regular season. It's just, yeah. it's, it is fact. No matter how good you look after MSI in NA, you are going to have a bad first couple weeks. Yeah, that's true. I also think um, uh, TL is going to benefit a lot from best of threes as well. They seem like a team that's filled with grinders, and the more games, like there's like grinder type players, and then there's like the other ones, right? Like Fudge or whatever, right? That are not grinding. <laughs> the other ones. I love that. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Based for that. Yeah. Also, we have to factor one more thing. Yeah. Team Liquid is going to Esports World Cup. Oh, I so they have that. to go to another tournament in the middle of the season. Mm. And uh, it's July 4th is the start oh, date. In wow. less than a month, they're going to another tournament. And FlyQuest does too. So that will yeah. really hurt both teams coming back. That's going to that's gonna hurt them in terms of like regular season development. But in terms of long-term experience, it should benefit them. Right? It's literally just the MSI people yeah, from exactly. the top four regions. Like, so it can... can't hurt them in terms of the yeah, world's experience, international, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm also excited that, you know... Okay, even though it sucks for Jensen and he has to go to Dignitas, which is a bummer. Uh, if Quad is good... If Quad has oh. potential, he gets oh. to speed run some like some main character development right here, right? He gets to within a few weeks of being on a main org play against Chovy. <laughs> <laughs> After being the sub on Nongshim, no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, dude, that that's not exciting. That's terrifying. I hey, this is where like make or break heroes are shown, right? If yeah, you are a true. good player, you get to show really quick. He has what it takes. And if he doesn't, well, it sucks for his career. But, like, I think a lot of fresh players, they don't get the chance to show what they've got against the best for many, many years, for a long time, if ever, right? Main one is, like, players like, um, who do we have? Uh, what's TL's joke? Umpty, right? Umpty for so long could not show what he had to show because he was on the 10th place bro roster. Goes to the LCS, immediately wins, right? So I think a lot of players would love to be given this chance early in their career to be like yeah i'm the fucking best i get to prove that i'm really really good asap and that will define your career and your paycheck and your trajectory for the rest of your life so quad has the chance to essentially cash in big if he performs at this tournament right i don't think a lot of players get that chance he's young if he messes it up he'll get known for it for a long time that sucks high risk high reward but the reward is big right if you have a good game against like chovy or like knight or something or faker or or caps you immediately get to be remembered for the rest of your life that guy who joined FlyQuest and immediately popped off right so That's i'm excited for that i'm excited for that i hope it happens please god can we get one korean smurf join our join our league <laughs> not did. choke it, it it was berserk oh yeah not choke it that's the and key thing wow. and now you're it. asking a lot yeah, I mean, yeah, impact yeah. is a impact has smurf for forever i think we've paid all of our our yeah. karma in impact dollars i'm just saying i would love you know berserker was hyped because he did so much domestically but he always choked he has never had a good game internationally or or if he has it faded into memory right it's just so it was, he's never been as good he, as he is domestically relatively internationally he's yeah. just like and there and it's not his fault, right? C9 almost always played topside for no fucking reason. So it's not really his <laughs> go fault. Go to Nash, play three times or two and, times. And, we... and Blabber, like, pass top and doesn't even gank up there. Like, it's terrible. So now we'll talk about C9 because who are you having second place? I'm having C9 second place. Uh, I think they're going to yeah. go to Worlds. I think there's too much firepower otherwise. Um, I think so, that... Yeah. There's just no way, right? There's just no way that Zven was carrying There's no that way, right, right, bros? <laughs> right? We can't, can't miss another international, right, bros? With fucking Berserker and JoJo and uh, Blabber. There's no way. So I just feel like there's just too much firepower. They, they Basically, they're just like what FlyQuest was with all that firepower, but way more. If Thanatos is like 75% of the hype, 
He's just he's just still be an upgrade over Fudge. That's my I problem so. here, right? <laughs> yeah, I think Fudge just really suffered from just doing nothing. So if Thanatos just does something, uh, I think they'll have a better time. Also, I'm pretty sure Fudge was a main voice, and and losing that might be good for JoJo. JoJo felt like he was a guy who was talking to brick walls, right, all around him. He's trying to make plays. He's making five-man Nico engages. He's picking Yone. He has, he has a Sejuani. He's picking Yone mid, and he, the enemy team has four people in his lane, right? So maybe that'll change. Hopefully, uh, Fudge can stop yapping up there, and Thanatos, he doesn't speak English. Everybody just gank mid, right? Just help JoJo out. Um, and Thanatos... Notably is a uh, like a tanky support impact S player, more of the shield rather than the sword. I think that's what C9 needs. I honestly think you got Berserker, you have uh, Jojo, you have Blabber. You don't need a carry top laner. You need something to stabilize. And let's be real, tanks are broken, right? Tanks are super broken in this meta and on this patch. So it's fine. You got Skarner, you got Cassante. Just throw Thanatos on those two champions over and over again. And I think C9 will find a lot of success. Um, so that is very true, and then therefore Flabber can actually be good again. He doesn't yeah. have to deal with the yapper in top lane saying, "Please gank me, or who I will feed." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I need to go even in lane. Can you uh, cover my lane like t twelve times this uh, this series? Uh, yeah. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm also uh, excited for Reaper is coming back. I do think that there's That's going true. to be some growing pains right reaper is a great coach he's familiar with c9 but he hasn't been here in a while he hasn't been coaching lcs for a while he hasn't coached a top team in a while i do expect c9 to have their big ups and downs in the regular season especially with best of three but we already know they're gonna at least make worlds this year right like reaper and thanatos and the rest of c9 are too good so let's move on who do we have for third place I'm gonna let you say it first because I don't. I don't actually. I, I think about I, it. I, I was already ready for this, but then as we got to it, I was like, I, I, I kind of, I still kind of want yeah. NRG to come back, but I'll, I'll have a fly quest because it's boring, it's okay. safe, and I, I think Quad probably is gonna be fine. Hmm. I mean, he could be bad, honestly. Could actually, be there's bad. no reason we don't to. Know. Yeah, well, okay. No, but NRG's been bad for two playout. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll vote fly because it's boring, but I mean, they they still have a lot of good points uh, in their top side, unless Inspired has completely lost his mind. Like, he's just <laughs> tilted. And if that will be the case, then we, even though I'll be wrong with my prediction, I'll be pretty happy. So, <laughs> I, I don't think Inspired, I think Inspired got what he wanted, right? It was all, we always thought it was jokes and memes that inspired was flaming jensen it was not he was just 100 percent being real the whole time with us and then you got kicked <laughs> off the roster <laughs> it's like the anakin and padme meme where she's like there's no way you're actually trying to fire me right guys right? <laughs> yeah yeah totally we're good i'm just gonna it's all jokes right it's for content it's for the memes and then he actually gets fired off his team so i actually think inspired got it with his want he wanted a talented mid laner with a mechanics and large champion pool that'll do whatever Inspired says. That's what he got. I think that's what Quad is uh, for for this FlyQuest roster. So mm -hmm. if it works out, I have to agree with you. I do think that they're going to get at least a world's qualification third, spot. Right? Yeah, yeah, at least third, right? Um, but um, I'm not going to put him there. I'm not. Oh. I do, yeah, I do think it's very reasonable, but I already started with the thieves? Team Liquid thing. Oh, yeah, I'm putting okay. 100 Thieves. Like I said, I Sorry. want Team Liquid <laughs> to do... I want Team Liquid to make it. I actually have a feeling Team Liquid's not going to win the split, but I want them to. Just because I think the storyline would be hype. If they perform the best at Worlds, they win everything, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if it's going to happen just because consistency-wise, it's really tough to do that in LCS. Meta I also is also think very important. Meta is important. Meta is different, right? ADC's got changed a lot. Eon was smurfing on Lucian Nami and all this stuff, and it's going to be harder to do that with a lot of the changes to items. So we'll see how they how they adapt. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that, you know, 100 Thieves, they were that team that were scrappy and really good. They just lacked so much experience to go far enough uh, in playoffs. Now they're going to be back with a vengeance. No one's really talking about them, right? Everyone's talking about C9 with Thanatos and FlyQuest, Dignitas yeah, drama. That's true. You know, Energy came out with an interview where they're sticking with the same five. Dokla says, hey, I played like terrible. I'm so grateful that Energy is giving me a chance to come back. And now we're going to perform in summer because, hey, it's still Energy. They're one of our champions, right? They haven't changed rosters that much. 
So Dude, it's the G2 roster that we were literally looking at. I'm yeah, they, uh, they 2 0 G2. And um, no one is talking about 100 Thieves, though. So I want 100 Thieves to go because Quid is greater than Quad. And, <laughs> and I just love that. And, you were uh, saving that for a while. <laughs> I, I know. And then River is just the goat jungler. He's my goat. I love River. He's my favorite jungler in the LCS right now. Okay, Contracts and River are kind of tied for that for that spot so um but i put money on river contracts is very fun and i would definitely watch his games but that doesn't mean i would bet my like my firstborn on him absolutely not well unless you're playing j4 against g2 and you're the best you're the best player in the dude that was actually still transcend i can't that was that that was like okay that was probably one of the best performances from an individual na player like internationally ever actually Ever. ever That was crazy. But the problem with contracts is he's sometimes just a mega inter and you just see him not perform for like months on end in the regular season. Um, so that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the, the goat. blood pack he signed. He's yeah, like, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's our goat. That's our, that's our contracts. Love him or hate him. You can't deny he's fun to watch. Um, Agree. But- and sniper with more time. Like, dude, guys, this is his first split. Yeah, he was pretty hype. And Riven's good. Riven is actually good in the meta. We might actually see it again. Um, I don't know if you watch... Have you heard of Alois NL? Um, he's a streamer. He's a European streamer. Uh, he does a oh, lot of educational why. content. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's pretty popping right now. He like uh, he like went to Korea. He's like went, got like rank 14 or 12. But one trip really? Riven As a streamer? Korea. Yeah, yeah. He's insane. He's really, really good. He's why like, have I never heard of him? What the heck? He's, uh, he's known for like the fundamentals meme, right? Fundamentals? No, you don't know that? I know the meme. I just didn't know he, what. He, so he's he, been around for a little bit. He's been around. He's been the challenger for like ten years plus. He's been a long time. Yeah. How do you spell it? Sorry. Alois. I'll, I'll type you, it in you, chat. you can say. I was like, you can say it, but I don't know how that's spelled. A l o i s n l. Yeah. No, I've never. He's heard a river that name. one trick. He does like he does like zero to masters on every top lane champ and does like educational gods to them. Really good. Anyways. This is a caveat. I, it was supposed to be short, but we're getting to it. It's fine. He's a great content. You should go watch him. Um, he's a Riven one trick, and this is a season where Riven is actually really good. As long as you don't play into Skarner and Cassante, all right? So, oh, okay. I see where the tie-in is. I was like, where are we going with so, this? So, so <laughs> if, you know, if we get into, like, late stage, best of fives, I know NA isn't doing Fearless, but if we ever do, I don't know, maybe we'll see Riven in, like, challengers or whatever but i could see sniper picking riven in a series oh. where hey Cassante and skarner first rotation band or band eventually right and then you pick like an r5 uh riven that could totally be a thing because riven's really strong right now if you don't have to play against those champions uh so that's that's really hype for me and uh i love riven and i hope that this hundred thieves roster does well so i have him third yeah i got him third okay and they were doing really well last season they were second place they were second place in the regular season, and they uh, just barely didn't make it to MSI. Yeah, they yeah, were really so, close. So okay, yeah. that's fair. I uh, that is fair. Yep, they. Uh, they Liquid got... was not the one that was supposed to win everything, so I was like, "That's odd." Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. So, who do you have for your fourth place? Um... Mm, so I actually still have energy. I think okay. that. I think this roster is still they're the boys. They did things that were unspeakably. Like, we, no one expected it to happen, and yeah. now they have a lot more experience together. They have a lot more motivation. So to me, I did want to put 100 Thieves in this spot, but like to me, I think 100 Thieves, contrary to what we we're hearing, like I think they had a very good meta, and Sniper just like, I want him to be him, but I've also seen a lot of what meta like top laners. Like, they play one top lane split, do really well, and then we get overhyped just for it to not really play out. So I'm not ready to be hurt, but if I'm wrong, I'm very, I'm, I'll accept it. I'll be happy. I just, yeah, sure. he's very on a nice edge. He plays like a super sick all off game, one game, and then feeds his ass off the next. And I'm like, I don't know, man. That's cool. You're a hundred thieves hater. It's fine. You know, <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So you have energy fourth. Uh, I have fly quest fourth. I'm going to have them barely missing play uh, barely, barely missing worlds. Um, mm-hmm. I, this is, this is a bit of a more of a personal tier list. I actually usually don't do this 
personal tier list stuff, but man, I just don't like FlyQuest. I don't know why. I haven't liked them since 2020 when they had that super underdog underdog roster with like Wild Turtle and Ignar and like Santorn and Poe and stuff. But I just have not liked this roster, this this organization since then. And I mean, I, the thing is, love and hate are very close sides of the same coin, <laughs> so you true, can hate. You can love them and hate them even harder as a result. Yeah. So uh, they change from what they were. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, I mean, they just. I just don't like Inspired anymore as a person. I like him as a player. I think he's very talented. I just don't like him as a person. Like, hot damn. That's very fair. I'm sure he's great to the rookies because they do everything he says. I just feel like he's got control issues. You know, he loves his rookies. But it's because he gets to be the guy who tells him what to do, right? <laughs> like, I don't know if Inspired's dating anyone, so this is not me like literally flaming him. But if he, I almost am certain he's into younger people, oh, <laughs> men okay, or women. Yeah. I don't care. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's that's his personality type. He's yeah. very much like he wants to be in control. He's a domineering type. Yep, he probably likes you know. He's the spanking type, not the spanky. I don't know why I just said I that. I didn't go that far, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't know why we just I, did that. I blame I, you. You brought it on to me. Okay, you you introduced it. You said you weren't going to say it, and I was like, oh, wait. I, have to I was say just it. saying he likes to date <laughs> younger people, not M's. I didn't okay. say that. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Fifth place. We're like almost on our fifth year of this podcast, and I've never heard a topic like this year. Moving on. <laughs> fifth place. I have – this is where I put energy. Uh, energy is – I don't know, man. Like, I I actually want energy to do well, but I'm just never going to believe in them, okay? They could literally be at the finals of Worlds, and I'll just be like, I don't believe in you. That's the only way I can honor them as an organization, ah, as a team, okay? okay. I'm just never going to believe in them. I literally don't give a fuck, okay? They could hire Faker himself to coach his team, and I would say, you know what? They're going to get ninth place. And then they'll keep winning, and I'll be like, no, they're going to get, they're going to lose 0-3. I'm just going to not believe in them, ever. Like, it's just a rule from now on. So I'm going to say uh, they're fifth place. Um, they suck. They looked so bad last split. <laughs> so they, they that, looked pretty you know, bad, especially sure in playoffs. Did. In playoffs, I was like, what the hell am I watching? So This might have uh, been my second vote in a row that was, look, that comes out really badly. My T1 vote wasn't that bad of a vote, but yeah, yeah. they didn't win. <laughs> it, yeah, it was it was not. Um, T1 also, we'll talk about them at the end of this uh, little segment, but... Who do you have oh, no. for? Who do we have for fifth? Who do we have for fifth place? Uh, I I put uh, hundred thieves. Hundred thieves. Wow, so, yeah. what a hater! We we just okay. we're only one off of each other for this one. Yeah, we're, we're a two couple, off. Just a couple split here and there. But then I think our bottom is going to be. Wow, we really put. I'm putting. I guess we're putting Dignitas or something. Or who else is even left? We got Dignitas, Dignitas and Mortals Again, and Shadowfy, I, right? right I'm, I'm putting Dignitas pretty... six. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think it's. I'm putting Dig Shopify, and then Immortals. Yep. Immortals eighth again, damn bro, that's rough. You gonna do I it mean, to them like that? I'm doing I mean, it. I Immortals too. at least competed last split, but the problem is like yeah. no one wants to watch Immortals in a best of three. Immortals no one wants of... Ormao, dude. That they gotta get Ormao the out of there. I don't know how he keeps getting get chances. He must be just a nice guy, dude. He he's... must. Yeah, he's. It's this thing I was talking about last split or yeah last year with EG, right? His floor is really high, actually. Unironically, yeah, no, he has that a is really true. high His floor. His average is quite good. Yeah, especially for teams that are newish or don't have good fundamentals or are like rookieish, right? Yeah, but like if you want to get above like be good in LCS, you don't have Armal. If you want to train up your your newbies, yeah, exactly, training wheels. Armal is a perfect guy to teach you fundamentals. But that's when why you he's want... always the sub in too, because yeah. if your team's on fire, you need stability. He's stable. Yeah, he's, he's stable. Fine. <laughs> he, he'll let his top laner get first blooded five games in a row. <laughs> Uh, just a shout out to still, Team Liquid. Still a uh, legendary, complete catastrophe of a yes. jungler. That was, that was brilliant. Um, okay, so we got we got uh, Armau in the eighth place on Immortals. We got Shopify in seventh with uh, their new jungler Tomio. Unfortunate for Bevoy, probably locked in Elo Hell, and we got Dinktoss in sixth, um, which is I think their average. I think that's their average. If they peak. They can make fourth, I think, um, yep. for Dign- this Dignitas roster. Uh, I think that if they really blow the expectations out of the waters, it's because their players, like Sven or Spika or something, they took over the team. They took over the coaching staff. They ignored what their dummies are saying. That's the only way I could actually see this Dignitas roster making worlds, right? Is that they completely, like, booty blasted the coaches out of the office and said, no, get out of here. 
We're going to run the team. It's going to be a player run team. If they do that and they all peak, that's the only way I can see this Dignitas roster making it to Worlds, which that's is what great. they want, right? I think this is what the Orgs want. That's why they signed these guys. They want to make Worlds, and I really think that's the only option for them. So, yeah, it's fair. All right, any last thoughts on the LCS rosters? We're coming up in an hour. We should probably close it out soon, this episode. No, uh, this is a this is the right amount of changes in the mid-split. It's neither too many or too few. Yeah. I think it's a good Last amount. Last time there was a bunch, but this time it's like pretty average. But I like that most of the changes don't feel egregious besides, you know, getting rid of XU, probably. Yeah, or or even getting rid of Jensen for FlyQuest, right? Because like, okay, Fly, that's Fly, true. FlyQuest's floor definitely dropped lower, right? When you have Jensen, you have a very high floor. You're almost like this FlyQuest roster is probably guaranteed worlds if they kept Jensen on. Uh, now it's going to be pretty topsy turvy depending on how Quad does, right? Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm I'm excited for the split. I'm ex so so excited for the um, the format changes with all these ch uh, all the roster changes like combined. Everything combined happening at the same time. Ooh, it feels good. It feels nice. I feel like LCS is like getting some life. We're, we're so from. back. <laughs> yeah. We're, hey, so this is the thing I wanted to talk about to kind of sum up uh, just the ideas of LCS. Remember, we were talking about for a solid two years plus. Burn it down, right? We're with 315 at Worlds. Our viewership is draw dropping. Salaries are at a million plus for pl some players that don't do anything, right? They don't practice. They don't play. We, you know, LCS, they made uh, Champions queue, and we have all these top tier million dollar players not practicing in Champs queue, not playing solo queue, not like doing anything, right? Work life balance, all this bull crap. We burnt it down, right? We we fell really far down. We lost our Challengers League. We we got rid of TSM, CLG, Golden Guardians, another roster, or oh EG, yeah yeah. We got we lost all these organizations. Uh, we lost our commissioner. We went to Wednesdays and Thursdays and all this gross stuff that wow, we don't like right. to think about. <laughs> we really went to this is the depths of hell. Uh, we're going to be in the closet for two games this season again. But yeah, oh well. <laughs> we're getting two we're days, getting I mean. uh, cocked by Valorant still, right? But hey, we are coming from the bottom. A little underdog. We got some underdog vibes. I really feel it, right? These yeah. like Mark Z videos feel so like OG. I don't know. It's like. Like this is like besides some nameless dude like I like, like would do videos with Travis Gafford. Remember that dude who would do interviews with Travis Gafford that told us that like you know this team's leaving or like we're doing Wednesdays Thursdays. The late LCS is not dead. I'm like who the hell is this guy? I've never seen this guy in my life, and he's the commissioner of LCS or whatever. Now we have literally, Mark Z. Literally who's? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a bunch of random ass people who don't obviously play league at all running the, the scene. And now we have Mark Z just talking to us face to face in a random ass video as our commissioner being like, hey, we're doing these changes because we think you guys might like it. Hope you like it. Should be cool. Like it just feels finally like we're back to our roots. We're the underdogs. Uh, we got people who we like who are invested in the scene. And we're making things up, you know, we're, we're experimenting, we're doing some unique stuff to uh, breathe life into it. So this is this is the turnaround. This is the phoenix being born from the ashes. We burnt it down for a few years and now we're dusting it off the, the uh, you know, metaphors. Yeah, we, so. bur we burned, uh, burned down Phoenix one as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. We, we burnt down a lot of teams. We have let go of a lot of orgs and rosters. Oh, absolutely. Um, and a lot of top players, right? We have lost all of our like goats right we had no more double lift no more rierkson no more so many of these guys and we are here we are ready so that's awesome that's exciting um anything else we want to talk about let's end it on that that was a positive note, uh, right? the, the ari skin oh, oh i forgot about that <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was hoping that we'd have a positive after it but if we're gonna leave it on it we have uh, to mention it yeah i forgot we're about by riot man we uh, gotta mention this shit. yeah so yeah t1 faker <laughs> Hall of Legends, greatly deserved. deserved the goat. Uh, he he is obviously you know should be the first person to first spot. They make a skin for him, cost five hundred bucks. Ari skin. Yep. Tell me about it. You gonna buy it? How many of those are you buying? Right, one for each of your account, right? Yeah, one for one for each uh, each side account, of course. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's crazy. So it's not just a skin. You'll get a title that's like final boss faker or whatever, which okay. is cool. I actually yeah. love the idea of having his name enshrined as a title, but paywalling it. Okay, so battle pass 
is like 20 bucks. It's about the same. It's very expensive, but it's a battle pass, whatever. Okay. Then you don't have to buy it. Battle pass plus skin is like 60 or 50 bucks. And the okay. skin itself basically is an ultimate skin price wise for a base skin. No special things. It's just like a kind of cool looking skin. It's not a bad skin at all. If it weren't <laughs> with all the caveats, right? Yeah. Then it goes to like 250 straight up and you get a skin that has like his trophies on it and has like an animation and it's pretty cool. Would have been sick at 30 bucks. Yeah. That's the max I would pay for it. Yeah. And then another 150 or 200 later, which is like, it's 450 to 500, depending on like regions, I think, but like roughly for 500, it's like an estimate, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get the signature, mm. you get a turret break animation mm, yeah, and nice. you get like the faker doing a pose above you with like his, <laughs> his signature pose or whatever. Hey. I don't remember which one it is. Yeah. And I was like, and I sat down, I was like, $500? 500 Are you bucks. kidding me? We already yeah. flamed it for the Jin Chroma, but you know what the reality of it is? That told us all we needed to know. The Jin Chroma must have sold well enough to be worth the PR nightmare that it was. Yeah, the whales. Um, so I, I've broken it down. I hate it. I'm a, I'm a person who spends money in video games, both buying games, buying DLCs, buying skins. I love that stuff. Yeah. I don't buy that much but uh, anymore like I used to, but I still do it because I support the devs I like games for it's fun this yeah. is this but this is absurd yeah. um the last thing i'll mention is faker's team t1 gets 30 percent of the cut oh! faker faker doesn't get 30 percent, so uh, we don't know what faker gets he could get sus. 20 he could get 10 he could get 15 plus even split who knows but it's still crazy i think that they are trying to limit tests i think they're like faker's the goat we're gonna do this kind of thing every year maybe uzi will be the next maybe it will be barrel maybe it'll be so somebody right like yep. Mata or something yeah. But they want to test it here, and then they can be like, oh, this is a $300 bundle in the future. Look how much better it is. I hate this. Yeah, I hate it. I uh, I think it's funny that they made a $500 skin for Faker, and this is the guy that doesn't play skins. <laughs> like, he is, he is famous for not wearing skins in professional matches. So he has a skin that's worth the most ever in existence and he won't even play it probably <laughs> which is just sad uh it is just disappointing and i don't think faker really stands for this kind of stuff right this is just a cash grab you remember diablo 4 so um diablo 4 was just like this game released by blizzard you could spend like hundreds of thousands of dollars on in-game uh currency bullshit right you could microtransactions and then that's how you would kind of like make it to the top and be the best and the most decked out diablo whatever thing um yeah the business model worked because even though like 95 percent of players did not use the microtransactions in diablo 4 if just a small percentage of people the whales do buy it it's a worth it's worth for them it's a it's actually a profitable model and that's what Bl ride is doing it is very predatory it's not fun for 95 percent of the people who play this game but if they get that small like couple percentage of people to buy this 500 hundred dollar faker skin well like you just said right an ultimate skin's 20 bucks 500 dollars is like a lot of that it's uh it's you know um it's like 2.5 or 25 times Right. 25. You're absolutely yep. right. So I wish it know. was 2.5. I'm like 50 no, bucks. I'm like, that's a lot for a skin, guys. Yep. That's a full, well, an old full triple A game. Now it's like, yeah, twenty dollars less. But still, fifty dollars is a lot of money, guys. Fifty dollars. But this is five hundred dollars, and you know, five hundred dollars. This is this is literally. It's one person buys his faker skin. It's worth yeah, twenty five normal people buying a legendary skin almost. Right. That's disgusting. That's, that's just like completely predatory when you think yeah, of the numbers like a that 60 dollar game from riot just like let's let's say you bought league of legends every year for 60 dollars right yeah it's almost nine years of league of legends <laughs> it's purchases. nine years of games oh my god Ooh, you could so buy nine crazy. yeah you, you could buy, buy nine in nine fifas like it's nine eight AAA and a half. games yeah for a like, skin this is not a game. This is not like some luxury resort. Like you could go to Vegas for five hundred bucks, bro. Like, I love you all can... the memes around it. They're like, for that cost, Faker better deliver the goddamn skin to me, dude. Faker better, better, better hang, hang out sign. with me, man. <laughs> okay, I really think that they were gonna launch this. They should have bit the bullet and put a physical like figurine or something memorabilia, like a super sick bag behind it. And then at that something. point, even though it sucked, it's still fucking overpriced. Yeah, there would be something. You are just asking to be ridiculed. To spend. the only people who spend that much money on a digital good are gotcha game players, and yeah. gotcha game players get a pay to win thing if you do that. 
Yeah. You but... you don't get enough. I, I think you don't get an advantage from this skin. Also, you know what's funny? The skin's going to be free in LCS and in, in pro play in general. Ah, because they always yeah. have skins enabled, right? So they uh, yeah, just all play their five hundred dollars skin. For free. <laughs> it's like yeah. so, some for some people that's like a percent, a pretty sizable percentage of their salary. <laughs> hey, five hundred bucks? That's like you know rent in some countries, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that's it's, more than rent in some countries. In like, some countries, that's like over a year of income. Uh, sorry, month of income. Like, yeah, easily. Over a month. Yeah, 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 definitely. So it's pretty disgusting. It's pretty predatory. And you know what? They're going to make their money back because all it takes is, like we said, there's a few selection of people who 500 bucks is nothing to them. They'll yeah, buy a I'm couple of them. I'm sure the Asian whales will buy the shit out of this. It doesn't matter to them, right? They're just going to be it's able to do it. So, um, yeah, that's that sucks. It's going to work out for them. It is. And it's just not enjoyable for the people who play this game. They've like, definitely normally. done the math. They yeah. might be wrong, but they definitely have done the math, and the math has convinced them this is doable. And it'll be good enough. And it's also like, and you think about it, right? All the effort put into make this skin, is it actually like 25 times more effort than it was to make a normal skin? No, it wasn't, right? Yeah. So their their profit of margin is massive on whenever they sell the skin, right? So like, if a, if a if a developer, or an animator, or, or a graphics designer spends whatever amount of time it takes to make a twenty dollar ultimate skin right? 25 times that, right? There's no way it was 25 times more effort, but just 25 times more profit. It's really silly. However you break down the math, the skin is stupid. Don't buy it. There is a petition going around in normal ban League of Legends. Ban Ari. I ban Ari every game I play on Summoner's Rift. I do. Well, also, I play a lot of Melee's mid. Oh, Ari's. I was going to say, like, I'm like... You Ari's already my hard counter in mid lane oh, okay. because I play so many Melee mids, so Fair I just enough. ban her anyways. But it, I still do. I ban Ari mid you, every You time. were ahead. You knew. I know, you could sense I it, right? Okay. It was up to some top foolery. Also, yeah. last thing, uh, unless you have more to say, I okay. really don't like the feeling that, at least last year, they might have just prevented him from using a Ari skin for the Worlds because they're like, oh, we're going to oh. cash in. Ari is way more popular than Orianna in the general public, right? Uh, oh. They might have told Faker, we want to make this your Hall of Fame skin. He's like, oh, absolutely. I would love that. Mm, he got and trolled. Then now he, he just got trolled. Yeah. He got, well, well, sort of trolled. He still yeah, got a then, really sick skin made out for him. And then they're but... <laughs> gonna make one for uh, who's the other mid lane goat? Probably like rookie, Chovy, Chovy, rookie, it, Chovy. Days, yeah, this one of those, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it's gonna be pool party, Ari. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I mean, Chovy the, Knight, the they're both known. Meme. They're both known for Ari a little bit, so yeah, we can they see. They are. It. Yeah, and so Knight has like literally the most un inhuman. <laughs> win rate on that character <laughs> true yeah very high win it gets banned against him all the time um so we'll, we'll see if knight or chobi ever win worlds they can maybe yoink a skin um also sad news ah we're just ending this podcast on a negative note but uh yeah t1 players they still can't uh they still can't uh play the game they can't they can play they can play solo queue if they don't stream but whenever they stream they get ddosed so oh once again still? t1 yeah yep so uh we t1 have how much time to fix this let's just have t1 move to na it's all of 2024. Yeah, that'll fix it. Yeah. <laughs> all of 2024. They're like, I'd rather get DDoSed than play on 40 ping. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 60, 70 ping, bro. In LA, it's like 60, oh, 70 yeah, ping. They, they would be in LA. Yeah, yeah. No, it's terrible. In, in um, Seattle, it's 46. So. Wow. I hate you. Wait, how? It's farther from... I don't know. It was also only 50 back when I was in SF. I don't know how you're having that kind of ping. I get 60 ping right here in Oakland. So. Do you play with Ethernet? Yeah, I also get uh, I also got sixty ping when I played. And in... you definitely know internet service stuff, so yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe some sus stuff going on. Maybe I'm getting uh, maybe I'm getting tracked by Riot. They can't let me climb beyond <laughs> Emerald. Yeah. Do you know Do you know that draw tut video with the Akshan res? I need to send oh, it to you. Don't know uh, the meme. I don't know. Okay, send it to me. Send it to me. God, I will send it to you right after this. <laughs> okay, let's let's end this podcast. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, we are yeah, just yeah, yeah. we're, we're just talk, we're, we're just talking this shit. Yeah, this yeah, is we're actually what we shit. do after the podcast if we're not busy. We're just be like chatting for a bit, like hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> talk about random stuff, but you get a little insight into it. So that's gonna be it for the podcast. Um, some really great stuff going on in League of Legends on LCS. Some really terrible stuff going on when it comes to the skins department and stuff like that, but that's fine. LCS is what matters. LCS is the most important region, if we're being honest. They are what started it all in the first place. So We got some great Ooh. stuff coming up. Uh, LCS starts not this weekend, but next weekend. Actually, you're not going to see this episode for a while. It starts on the Saturday 15th or something like that. Yep. Um, so Yeah, look out for that. I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, let's go 
and hey, uh, we're going to win Worlds this year. This is it. This is the time. Uh, so try not to be too toxic, guys. Thanks for joining us on this podcast. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to end with this. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. All right. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.